Okay, I'm just going to do a wee bit of tidying up, really. So, i probably not do that much talking through this. This is just where I'm going back to my drawings. And I'm just checking um, areas to be refined that have been quite often I find I make them too big. So I'll probably at this stage it's a really good time to step away and have a cup of coffee. Um and then just have fresh eyes to look at them. I just have a bit higher. And a little bit of that here, higher. So and So I will um, try and explain what I'm doing and why. But it will be different for every sculpture. So at this point, you know, when you have yours in front of you, what I'm fixing here that I'm not quite happy about is going to be different than what you're fixing. It's just really fixing any bits that not quite happy about and strengthening lines uh, Well, from the corner of the ear, corner of the eye, around here, this central bit, way bit narrower. And then this is going to be quite a full rough. Um, so I'll just put my thumb there and go around. Um, I want this to have a curve that goes out. That S curve. Mm. And actually, do you know, I think I'm going to leave it with quite a broken edge. Mm. I think that's just going to be a nicer finish. Huh? Mm. So this neck, because it's added on last, it's quite... Soft. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get that soften. I'm going to give a wee suggestion of a shoulder here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I'm looking at to you is. This is too deep. Now you, with you, you can just use your, your template. But although I've given you templates to work on to help you, um, for me in my practice, I, I don't generally use templates. Um, so I'm not going to use templates too much in my um, demonstrations. I provide them for you to use, but my skills in, in seeing and seeing what isn't quite right, um, it, it wouldn't help me to start using templates, so I am going to just um, do it by eye. And it's just as I spot the difference, what is the difference between how this looks and how my drawings are. 
so you guys are gonna see that a little bit. So I um, sometimes get carried away with volumes and there's far too much volume in this lovely upper lip, although I do love a nice full upper lip. I was just maybe a wee bit too much colour. So that you know, almost have like you know the nose to be separate from this bridge and look at the that's a wee button on the end And the other thing is the fullness of that um, is actually right here, the fullest area. I don't want the lower jaw. The lower jaw is just barely seen in the lower, but you know, look at it and go, there's something missing if there isn't a suggestion of it, but you don't see very much of it. So, the other thing I'm noticing is this fullness. I think I corrected it on the other side. I checked the other side a minute. I need a wee bit more fullness here. I can add that fullness on, like it, almost like a texture, so it doesn't have to be. Um, just as long as the center is well attached, I can leave that. Um, if I'm using um, a texture like this where I'm really using the, the strokes of the clay to give me the texture because I'm firing this to emphasize that um, I will use either a porcelain slip or an earthenware slip something that is a higher shrinkage rate than this um, stoneware clay and white this clay actually fires to like a salmony biscuity color but by dry brushing what are you doing i shall show you even though this clay you wouldn't do it at this stage would you I'll see if we get that good and down again. I will just use this as a another white clay. And what I would do is almost like a dry brush. So I put a wee bit of this white clay on a fan brush. And um, if you think of going from the top surface down, just um, just little bits. And what that does is that again gives you. I didn't want to do that. That, that just again just in, increases the feeling of texture. You now don't go backward and forward. Try to just go the one direction. Um, and 
you can you know, dab it a wee bit. But keep your brush flat to the clay. Um, as I was doing that, I've got a wee, see why I've got a wee bit on the eyeball? Definitely don't want that because I want that eyeball to be nice and glossy and smooth and finished. So I'll just take a wee dab paintbrush and brush that off. But that's just another wee tip for you about the surface finish. Um, and I would probably uh, I'm not dry enough to do that same either. Quite dry, so I'm just going to have a sip of that. And just put that on. Now, not, you know that you're putting that on quite in a broken way, so it's not a solid covering. Um, so if you're using air drying clay, and you go, ah, oh, I can't do that. Air drying clay is so, so flexible and um, adaptable. So you would make your, your hair head, let it dry completely, and then before you go to paint it, take um, a white or a, so a red is always the best in the colour, like maybe a pale yellow, or you could use any colour you want, depending on the, the effect you want to achieve. Say a pale yellow and just dry brush it over the top and that'll give you a nice finish. It'll just increase that feeling of, of texture. And when I'm doing this, what I'm also trying to do is differentiate between this eyeball that will be high, you know, high gloss finish. If you're using air drying clay and you want to get that high gloss on the eye, just simply use a few coats of clear nail polish um, whenever you're finished sculpting. Um, so I want a lovely glossy, like glass finish to the eye. This area I want to be fairly smooth but a little sort of texture maybe a few almost brush marks but then I want the rest of it to be quite rough especially around the neck okay so this will be just me fiddling about a wee bit so probably you could stop working now I don't think there's going to be anything too um, interesting I'm just really you will, you will be tidying your own up in a different way. Piano, let's just keep looking at my drawings. And then when I'm looking at the drawings, I'm going, how is this different? How is this different? high eyebrow this raised area here and then I just want it to go down a little before the ear I'm not 100% happy with it yet Mm 
I'm just tucking in the inner eye and the outer eye. Because sometimes if you feel like it's too flat, you can just take a wee bit more away from the inner corner and the outer corner. It just gives it a wee bit more colour. I wasn't quite happy with the mind that it, this eyeball is protruding. No, I'm actually still not happy. That's fine. I have to do the same with this. So I'll just put a wee bit of button, a wee button of cry in here. So I've just rolled a wee ball. And then just flatten it slightly. And then just put that on. I'm not putting that on all the way to the edges. Um, if you were to look at an eyeball, where the pupil is is actually slightly, actually slightly protrudes a little more. So I'm just going to actually where the eyeball is and then blend it in. That way I don't have to totally redo the eyelids. It's still going to give me more volume. Mm No, I'm much happier with that volume. And it's just going to you know, because the hair's eyes do protrude a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, so I'll do him for today. Remember, I'm doing a wee easy sculpt tomorrow morning at half ten. Um, suitable for absolute beginners and children and it's going to be making a hair if you have time it'd be great fun for you to have a wee go too thank you bye